I was basically held hostage from the beginning till the end. He would not leave me. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, seriously, you can go now. I'm a big girl. I can handle it. I, God, I had such a nice day. Why, 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 why? I only had one day in the Arbacair. My flight was in the evening, so not knowing much about the city, I've only watched one video. I think it was from Drew Binsky, who was like super impressed with the city. So that was uh, kind of the reason why I decided to make a little stop in the Arbacair. But after a little breakfast in my hotel, I just went out without any certain plan, just wandering the streets, soaking up the atmosphere, which I actually really, really liked. It was busy since morning, everyone was heading towards the bazaar. The streets were very loudly, people were having chai, they were running around and I was just uh, looking at the sights. I went to the wall which is surrounding I think the majority of the city. I've also found the park. I heard about this um, really amazing bridge where a lot of people come to have picnics and I've seen pictures on Instagram so that was one thing that I really wanted to find. Walking around the city and their city park, uh, a young gentleman approached me and kind of just started to have a little chat with me and then basically <laughs> stuck with me for the entire day. He was walking around with me, accompanying me when I was uh, walking around the parks and walking around the wall and then heading towards the bridge and he was very nice he like we had some good um phone talks on translate somehow this lovely path around the castle is also leading through a cemetery Everyone who thinks uh, that I travel alone, um, I'm almost never alone and he's proof. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so these gardens down here, now uh, it's winter, so there isn't so many things, but this is a UNESCO site because uh, there are some of the oldest gardens in the world from the Mesopotamia. So the oldest sign of agriculture, yeah. We are walking to the very famous bridge and it's actually so nice to walk after yesterday sitting on a bus for 10 hours and the weather is just perfect.
half an hour later and we are at the bridge. like one of the most gorgeous uh, terraces, picnic places ever. I can only imagine how amazing it is when it's full of people and there's music, but there's no pandemic and it's so alive here. Now it's like there's no one, just us two. It's crazy, but it's so nice, so peaceful and just the sunshine. Oh my God, I could stay here forever. <laughs> spent a really really wonderful day I really enjoyed the bridge I really enjoyed the vibe there the sun was shining it was gorgeous it was really one of those days where you just cannot but help to feel like happy and like full of life and full of love it was honestly the best kind of way that I could imagine like ending this whole trip in southeast Turkey. After spending the entire day and him persisting to take me to the airport, Things went a little bit more sour. Well, I feel like in a real life hostage situation, but you cannot really argue with Kurt, so I'm gonna explain later. <laughs> You'll see at the end of the video what exactly happened, but nonetheless, I still had an amazing day in the Arbuk here. I'm still held hostage. <sighs> I don't even know how to start this because um, it's a rant. It's noisy. So this nice gentleman approaches me while I was discovering the sights of beautiful Diyarbakir. And in the fashion of Kurdish people and also Turkish, by now I know that uh, it's better to just give in and so he accompanied me um, to see a few sites, showed me some nice things as well. He was super nice, we were having a blast, we were having a really nice day and of course also in the fashion of Kurdish people he would not let me pay for anything, not for tea, not for entrance to the church not for food, nothing. And then, of course, he offered to take me to the airport as well. Um, I had already made plans with the hotel, they call me a uh, taxi. Uh, so he cancels the taxi, we go with his car, everything good. And then we arrive at the airport. Um, 
in my opinion pretty late i'm always stressed and want to be early not on time because like time management is just really stressful stressful for me and so we arrived to the airport and he writes me because we were communicating with google translate he writes me can i kiss you and i'm like what the fuck like really even once someone cannot be nice like especially male to a female without wanting something and by the way he was 22 years old and i'm like no fuck no like seriously my expression was like i was just like no 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 so at least he understood this one no and then he goes with me inside the airport i was basically held hostage from the beginning till the end he would not leave me like he was like this puppy following me everywhere and i had to let him and i had to say to him at the airport like seriously you can go now i'm a big girl i can handle it i can go to customs and everything alone you don't have to go with me to the toilet and you know wait for me like oh my god i had such a nice day why 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 fuck me really and by the way, the Arbukir is an amazing city. I have to come back when it's gonna be warmer and it's not the pandemic and there are actually pe people sitting outside in the parks and by the river. But yeah, this just completely, I won't say ruined, but it just put a really dark cloud on my whole day here, which was, if it wasn't for this small incident, it would be really amazing. So yeah, can't wait to get to Istanbul.